Hi everyone, I'm Tyler Salfidi from the Battalion Company of His Majesty's 10th Regiment of Foot. You know me from the battalion camera footage that has been up on the YouTube channel recently. I will be taking more of a leading role in the YouTube channel in the near future. I'm here with a bunch of my friends in rural Maine. We are doing a, another tactical like we did in the winter time. The weather's not really uh, cooperating today. No, it's not. So. <laughs> no, it's not. But yesterday, yesterday was okay. Yesterday, yesterday was great. Was okay, yesterday so. was great. So here we have our bearskin cap of inquiries. And we're going to be answering some commonly asked questions from the hobby. Going to have everyone introduce themselves and we'll get started. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm in the Light Infantry Company. I'm Devin. I'm in the Lights. I'm Sam. I'm also in the Light Infantry Company. I'm Noah. I'm in the Lights. I'm Isaac. I'm also in the Light Infantry. Jonah, Light Infantry. I'm Michael. I'm in the Grenadier Company. All right. So first question. Are you hot in that? Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next question. How do you know when you are dead? I can take that one. So, for the majority of the tacticals and reenactments, you can die whenever, basically. Occasionally, like Lexington and Concord and Battle Road, there are certain stipulations. For park ground, they, we aren't allowed to die, given their sacred ground that we have soldiers buried there. Lexington is a very scripted battle, since we know so much about it, that when we do die, or if anybody does die, it has to be in very special places. Other than that, it's really whenever you feel like it. If you're tired, if you're out of water, if your musket isn't working, if the situation demands that we take a bunch of casualties. Uh, I will add also with regards to Lexington, it's somewhat of a dangerous battle, I guess. We have our bayonets fixed and we're breaking ranks. Typically, those two rarely happen. And when they do, they're mutually exclusive. We'll never break ranks with our bayonets fixed. Um, but we're doing both and it's in the morning so you guys all know how that fog like sits on the ground and you could be running and miss a militia men that's like right in front of you so you know it's very scripted it's one of only a couple battles we do a practice run through to make sure that we uh, know what we're doing so that's another reason why it's scripted in that manner and also historically we only took one casualty during the battle yeah so, mm -hmm. right. so usually usually in the 10th it's the newest guy yeah. that yeah. has to take the casualty right. usually um, they don't even have a musket usually they don't even who, who took it this past year i think it was you when you slipped because i don't think the person who was supposed to take it was here yeah so, i wiped out on lexington right green this year so uh, experience doesn't necessarily translate to not having accidents on the field so again safety is really important i stayed in my lane i fell luckily no one was hit with my musket or my bayonet and yeah here we are so or yourself or myself <laughs> yeah. yeah it did look kind of bad on camera <laughs> all right next question why did he choose the red coats or and how did you get involved yeah, at least for me, aside from the fact that I'd always been interested in the British side and the uniforms are cool, I just think the British is just such a... The respect of a lot of people do not oftentimes look at or give too much attention to, and I personally wanted to learn more about them and their side of things, and it's really kind of shown me that this conflict was pretty much more so a civil war rather than just a war between one group and another group that were completely different. So I joined the 10th for a very personal reason. Um, I had a good friend in the regiment, Isaac, sitting here to my right. <laughs> I was going to say, does he happen to be sitting here right now? <laughs> he does happen to be sitting here right now. So he invited myself and my brother uh, to come check out the 10th, and we really like the group. It's a great group of people. We have great material culture and drill, and we do a lot of fun events, so that's what made me stay. But it's great to know someone in the hobby. If you do, they can really help set you up for a successful journey in the hobby. So I decided to join with the British. It really happened because I reached out to Isaac through the YouTube channel. And we discussed over email getting more involved directly with the 10th Regiment of Foot. But before that, I, I had an interest in the Grenadiers. So I thought joining a regiment with the Grenadiers would be nice. But I also had a deeper interest in the dichotomy between the colonial people of the time and the natives to England, how they were more similar than people will think of nowadays, and also their differences. So I thought giving a voice to the British soldier by interacting with crowds as a British soldier would be 
something I'd be interested in. When I was quite young, I attended the Battle of Lexington with my brother. I lost a lot of interest um, through my early teens, but with him joining and badgering me for about three years to join it, I went to one drill. I really liked the social culture. The history was never as important to me as it was you know, being with a great group of people. And throughout that first drill, it was a bunch of people I liked, um, and I just went with it, and I've enjoyed it ever since. And I've actually learned quite a bit about the history through this unit as well. Don't feel like you need to know absolutely everything about the period, about the equipment, about the unit that you're joining, especially not in the temp. If you want to learn more about it, absolutely, we will teach you. You will learn just being in the regiment. Uh, we have a lot of experienced members who have been in the regiment for a long time, a few of which have been in the regiment since its beginning. So you will learn. You don't need to be a history buff, but it definitely does help. <laughs> yeah. All right, next question. Are your muskets real? They are, uh, kind of. They're not from the 1700s, but they are essentially exact copies. So if we were to load a real musket ball, it would fire it. Which we do. Some people have gone out and, and live fired their muskets. Some of our muskets, due to uh, the way they were produced, don't allow us to fire them live just due to safety concerns, but uh, many of them do. It's also worth noting that uh, a lot of the reproduction muskets aren't truly authentic to what they would have looked like back in the time from the metals used as well as the wood used. Uh, our unit, as well as other units, and the hobby in general are working on uh, correcting this and, and making sure our muskets, as well as our uniforms as a whole, are more historically accurate. So uh, Noah's musket here is actually one of the prime examples of the closest reproduction we would have to what a musket would have looked like back in the day. So he's going to kind of talk a little bit about how his musket uh, is a little bit more accurate compared to many of the other muskets we have here. Yeah, so the primary way my musket is more accurate uh, is the stock, which is... It looks close to English walnut, which uh, was what they used. So it has that darker hue. As you'll see on some of our videos, you'll see lighter guns or guns that are sort of faded in the stock. But this dark look is um, authentic. Uh, one more thing that's uh, authentic on this gun, or more authentic. Well, they did not use flash guards. Although flash guards did exist, they would not have been on the guns that we used. But we do use them for safety. And a lot of the guys have brass, but this one, it's just steel, uh, so it, it sort of blends in a little more, and it's a little more authentic, even though we technically would not have used it. Yeah, and this is something we hope to replicate throughout the regiment. We have some members who are interested in sending their guns away to be worked on. So the process of shipping our guns off, there are several places around the country who work on muskets and try to make them more authentic. That involves working on the wood, as Noah mentioned, darkening up the stock, it also involves dulling out the steel, and um, there's a, some other stamping process that we can go through um, to make the gun more individualized to the regiment, but also uh, the member who's carrying it. So that's something we hope to be working on in the future. Sometimes they also, on the uh, brass plate, on the small of the musket, uh, they would oftentimes inscribe not quite a serial number, but it would like tell you what company that this musket belonged to and what regiment. Next question. What to look for when joining a regiment? Uh, so this is a very personalized question. It can depend on what side of the war you want to reenact, whether that's the British regular army, militia unit, a loyalist unit. So there's that side of it. There's also a time commitment part to it. Our regiment does a fair amount of events throughout the year. There are other regiments who do fewer. So that's something to consider when thinking about what kind of unit you're interested in joining. Uh, one of the things that makes a unit great is great people. And you're going to be spending a lot of time with them, whether it's a you know, two hour or 30 minute parade all the way up to a weekend in out of the country when we go to Canada, such as a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So you want to make sure that those people who you're spending time with are the type of people you like to hang out with. Yeah, because you could possibly get stuck in a house with them uh, when it's <laughs> raining outside, you know? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so people, obviously very important. 
like Jonah was saying, you're spending a lot of time with them over a period of years. A lot of people stay in this hobby for their entire lives, um, and that's my plan. You know, adding on to that, safety is incredibly important. There have been actually a few safety issues that have come up in the news uh, recently, and you normally wouldn't hear about or think about safety being an issue, but we're using firearms that, uh, as we spoke about earlier, can fire live projectiles, anything where gunpowder and potentially projectiles can mix can create a, a dangerous environment. So safety is very important, uh, making sure that a unit is well drilled, often translate into a more safe experience on the field as well as uh, in drill as well. So uh, I think safety is a, a big issue to think about when uh, looking at a unit. It's also something to consider as organization. Some units are a little more loosely organized, some are a little bit more. That's a personal preference. Each one of you will have to decide what you're looking for. But I would say the best way to find that out is, you know, just talk to the members, you know, come up to us at events. We always love talking to the public about joining and we can talk about how our unit is organized. Yeah. So going off of like the organization, kind of detailing the pros and cons, you, you have some of the units that are, are very strict, very well organized. And, and the benefits that come from that is uh, the fact that, you know, members don't have to be worried about, you know, some of the everyday decisions you know, other units that are less organized have to deal with, such as like finances and things like that. Units that are more democratic, often members have more of a say in what goes on. So, you know, you can find a fine balance between the two of them, uh, or you can go to uh, either end of that, whichever you feel most comfortable with. So uh, it's worth noting. Next question. What are the challenges of reenacting? Um, so one of the big challenges is the time commitment that you make to the hobby. At least for some units, uh, there are several events throughout the summer, fall, and spring, and sometimes even the winter. So you're making a time commitment and you might have to cut back on other things sometimes. And you can always go on a unit's website or talk to people to see how many events they have each year, when they drill, how often they drill. But that's just one consideration you should think about before joining a unit. Another challenge to reenacting is staying flexible. There's a lot of situations that come up. This hobby is mainly outdoors, so events can get rained out. You have weather. You also have members who might need rides or, you know, you want to help other people out. You're one giant family, so oftentimes you have to make sacrifices to make sure the group as a whole stays positive and does well. Your general physical health uh, is very important. We do a lot of walking. Lights, you guys do a lot of running. <laughs> as you yeah. found out. <laughs> as I have found out as of recently. Yeah. Um, but if you have underlying issues that won't allow you to do something like go on a hike or uh, something like that, just take some consideration into how you want to participate in uh, the scene of reenacting and historical living. There are all sorts of avenues to take, but we are reenacting being soldiers, and soldiers did have physical standards. And keeping that in mind, for the tenth specifically, you know, you want to understand that different companies might require different levels of physical exertion. Uh, light infantry, obviously, we are running a lot, we are moving very quickly, and, and yeah, in general, you know, you just want to keep that in mind. One other consideration, an obvious one, is money. This is an expensive hobby. The musket I just showed you cost $700 to buy, and that's used. Uh, of course, there are financing plans for some regiments, um, ours included, and uh, so that can help, absolutely, uh, but that's one thing you should think about. All right, here we Throughout go. everything, reach out. We love to hear from you guys. We love to answer questions. It's the primary reason why we do this. It, through any group, through any reenacting, reach out. We're happy to hear from you. All right, well, hopefully that cleared up some of the questions that you might have had about reenacting. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Join the tent. <laughs> <laughs> Take care to the Spurs. <laughs> Wait, stand up. Wait, march, baby. All right.